Come on, come on, come on in the room. Come on, welcome to the first session. This is where my man is at. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, my beautiful family. Welcome to the first session of Therapy Thursday for the 2023 calendar year. I don't know if this is your first time. I don't know if you're like a faithful steward over your healing and you've joined us each and every session or whenever you can, but I'm so thankful that you are joining us on tonight for this first Therapy Thursday of the 2023 calendar year. You know how we do. Find somebody up and down the chat and tell them, I'm proud of you. Happy New Year. At John, I'm proud of you. Happy New Year. At Stacy, I'm proud of you. Happy New Year. Let's start a love thread. Let's start a support thread. Tell somebody Happy New Year. Text somebody this link. Text somebody the stream so that they can join us as we are starting our first session of the 2023 calendar year. I don't know if you could tell, but I'm very, very excited. It was around this time last year, January of 2022, I was really feeling burdened like I could do more. Jerry, you could do more. I'm praying about it. I felt as though the Holy Spirit was leading me to do a Therapy Thursday. And the reason this is, is because I've recognized, and I stated it all throughout our therapy sessions last year, I recognize that there are kingdom principles and kingdom mandates that we are required to follow as benevolent followers of Jesus that is going to require for us to be healthy on the inside for us to do it, for us to do it. You can't be generous with health if all you've known is takers. You're gonna need health on the inside to do that. It's gonna be hard for me to love my neighbor like I love myself when I don't love myself. So I stated that we need spiritual growth spiritual edification, and we also need to heal on the inside. Heal on the inside. And this is why we have Therapy Thursday, because God not only wants you to give him glory with your life, but he also wants you to not bleed for the rest of your life. Healing on the inside. Healing on the inside. Because as you heal, your perspective changes. Toxicity will no longer look like entertainment when you heal. Peace will no longer look like boredom as you heal. Man, this is just so boring. No, this is peaceful. Because as you heal, your perspective changes. Now, I have the third opportunity to do this. The third opportunity to do this. My, my doctor asked me this question in 2014. She asked me this question again in 2016. And now she's asking me this question again in 2023 because my beautiful bride and I are expecting our third baby, April of 2023. And I'm so excited. I can't wait to meet our beautiful son, our second son, Josiah Zion Flowers. I just can't wait to meet him. Um, but my doctor said, hey, hey, daddy, do you want to cut the umbilical cord? Now y'all know if you watched for any length of time, every single time she's asked me this. When she asked me this for my daughter, Melody, I said no. When she asked me this for my son, Jerry the third, I said no, I don't wanna have any birth defects due to me. But this time, can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> can't believe I'm saying this, T. This time, I'm gonna cut the umbilical cord. She asked me, do you want to cut the umbilical cord? And I'm like, okay, this time I'm gonna do it. But the reason I'm doing it, the reason I'm doing it, is because I want to remind myself that the Father has the authority to cut. The Father has the authority to cut. And I just feel this all in my heart, y'all. 2023, there's some stuff Abba Father wants to cut. Now, the reason he cuts us is so that he could keep us. 
This is good already. The reason I'm going to cut the umbilical cord is so that I could keep my son and take him home with me. The reason something needs to be cut is so that I can have the joy and the experience of burping my son. The reason something needs to be cut is so that I can have the experience of raising my son and teaching him kingdom principles and teaching him how to ride a bike and teaching him how to drive a car. But I could not do that if there was not a time in his life where something needed to be cut. Drive it home, Jay. God is saying there's something that I want to do in 2023, but there's also going to require that something has to be cut for me to do it. I want to take you deeper, but something has to be cut. I want to take you higher, but something has to be cut. I want to increase your anointing, but something has to be cut. The Father has the authority to cut. There's some risk that you're going to need to take this year. There's some risk that you're going to need to take this year if you want to see my wonders. Enough with swimming in the shallow end of casual Christianity. Enough with staying in the kiddie pool. You were not made for ponds. I built you for oceans. You can never experience walking on the water if you stay at the shore of your logic. Did y'all hear what I just said? You could never experience the miraculous. You could never experience the miracle of walking on water. What does that mean? Defying the odds. You could never experience the miracle of walking on water as long as you stay on the shore of your logic. I don't cut you to hurt you. I cut you to keep you, to keep you in my presence to keep you in my will because the good steps, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But watch this, God does not just order our steps, he also orders our stops. The Father has the authority to cut, the authority to cut. Can I mess you up? What if I told you that some of us are hurting from losing stuff that was never yours? Uh, yep. Same therapy, <laughs> different year. Some of us are hurting right now from losing stuff that was never yours. That was never God's will. That was never his plan. And the reason it hurts so much is because now you have become strangers that have your secrets. Don't do this. I'm not cutting you to hurt you. I'm cutting you to keep you. The only way I'll be able to carry Josiah is if something is cut. And the only way you'll be able to be birthed into another dimension of power this year, another dimension of discernment this year, is there something that has to be cut. Let's speak around this thought from this subject for our first therapy session of the 2023 calendar year. It's not personal. It's spiritual. It's not personal. It is spiritual. Can I get somebody to put that in the room? It's not personal. It's spiritual. I'm not doing this to hurt you. I'm doing this to grow you. I'm not doing this to hurt you. I'm doing this to develop you. I'm not doing this to hurt you. I'm doing this to chisel you. It might hurt your heart, but I'm going to grow you in your spirit. I'm not doing this to hurt you. I'm doing this to keep you. It's not personal. It is spiritual. Father, help us to remember that you have the right to cut. Cut every umbilical cord of toxicity, every umbilical cord of bitterness. Cut whatever it is that you need to cut so that you could take us to another realm. You could take us to a deeper depth because we don't want 2022 and 2023 to be twins because the worst place that we could ever be is the same place we were in this time last year. Cut us so that you can keep us. In Jesus' name, amen. I need everybody to put this in the room and all caps. Father, cut whatever you need to cut so I can go wherever you want me to go. <laughs> This is good. One more time. Father, cut whatever you need to cut so I could go wherever 
and whatever you need me to go. Whatever you need and whatever you want me to go, cut it because it's not personal. It is spiritual. I'm not going to be long, but I, I do want to kind of set the temperature, set the spiritual thermostat of growth this year. Um, I, I want us to look at Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, um, verses 16 through 19. Remember, the conversation that we're having on this evening is it's not personal, it's spiritual. All right? Acts chapter 16, verse 16, it says, Now it happened as we went to prayer. Put a bookmark there. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination. Two bookmarks. Why? After prayer, going to prayer, were followed and met by a spirit. When you are intentionally seeking out growth, spiritual warfare is activated. As we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul being greatly annoyed, Paul being agitated, Paul being grieved, certain translations say, turned and said to the girl. It's not what your text says. Turned and said to the woman. It's not what your text says. Okay. Some of us are grieved and annoyed and we're talking to the person versus understanding that it's a spirit. Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her. And he came out of her that very hour. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, we're gonna bother that later, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. When they recognized <laughs> that this was, this was spiritual, but they took it personal. Paul really could have said, listen, it, it, it's not it's not personal, y'all. This is spiritual. When they recognized that their prophet was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Now, I have to break this down because repetition is the mother of learning. Repetition is for the purpose of giving lungs to revelation. Anytime I repeat something or anytime something is repeated is to continue to breathe and provide CPR for the lungs of that revelation. I need you to remember this, okay? The original Greek word for the for spirit of divination is the spirit of python. Now, I've told us before, two types of servants, serpents, the viper and the python. Vipers strike by putting venom in your blood. There's something in your bloodline. There's a generational cycle. There's a dysfunction in the blood. There's a trait your mother had, your granddaddy had, that the enemy thinks is going to work on you. This is how vipers kill. Pythons, they kill by attaching. They, they kill by strongholds. Now look at this. Paul is walking with Silas. This girl is hollering out behind them. Listen to them. Listen to them. This is why you have to be careful about who supports you. Those who are, who are bound by people pleasing, you could view the support as a demon as a support of your of your business. I don't want just anybody to support me. <laughs> they're hollering out and they're saying, listen to these men, but it's the support of a devil. Why is this spirit of divination? Why is this spirit of a python following behind them? Because that is what pythons do. They attach. This is so good, y'all. That is what the enemy tries to do. I try to attach myself to your dream. I try to attach myself to your thought patterns because trauma is always revealed in our thought process. I try to attach myself to your preferences. I try to attach because the spirit of the Python 
tries to attach. It doesn't kill by its venom. It kills by a strike and a strong hold. I want people to think I'm attached to the ministry of Paul and Silas. Now, these masters, when they recognized they no longer could use this girl, because that's what healing does. Healing exposes those who benefited from your insecurity. Talk, man. Healing exposes those who are benefiting from your abandonment issue. Healing exposes those who are only there to consume the fruit, but not to enrich the soil. They were furious, but truthfully, <laughs> it was not personal. It is spiritual. Verse 18 was the one that was really standing out to me as I was preparing for this session. It says, Paul was greatly annoyed. Some of us are annoyed not because of those tacos you ate. Some of us are annoyed not just because you didn't get enough sleep. Some of us are annoyed not because we're worrying about catching COVID, but we're annoyed because the spirit on the inside of you is grieving and it's manifesting in your body. The spirit on the inside of you is saying, okay, how long are we gonna continue to allow them to have access to us? How long? I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed with the laziness trait. I'm annoyed with the laziness routine. I'm annoyed with you picking the same person that just has a different name. Whew. I'm annoyed with the addiction. I'm annoyed with the divorce in my family. I'm annoyed with the substance dependence versus the devotion dependence. I'm annoyed. And just like Paul turned around and said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. On tonight, we're saying in the name of Jesus, release every person who's battling with depression. In the name of Jesus, release every person who's battling with anxiety. In the name of Jesus, release every person who doesn't have clarity, where it feels like their vision is in a fog. Release them. It's not personal. No, this is spiritual. I'm trying on tonight to activate your spiritual awareness. The reason a lot of us are so annoyed, we're so grieved and frustrated, and we're not receiving the results that we desire is because you're trying to achieve the right thing from the wrong place. Yeah. You're trying to achieve the right thing from the wrong level. You know something that God gave me that I'm teaching this on Sunday? Sin always reveals an area that a need is deprived. Sin always reveals an area that a need is deprived. So if we could really, really evaluate what is tempting us, it's actually showing us an area in our life where there's a famine. I don't have the affirmations that I need. So them giving me affirmations, I'm, I'm really quick to fall to a counterfeit because when somebody affirms me, they're feeding and watering something that's already that's already in a drought within me. Sin exposes the area that is in need. It's just we usually seek out the sinful, temporary, and fleeting pleasure versus the spiritual, soul-quenching fulfillment that could only be found in Jesus. I'm doing this because I'm trying to activate your spiritual awareness. Like, one of the reasons a lot of us aren't seeing the results that we desire is because we're trying to fight it from the wrong level. You're trying to fight it with willpower, but willpower doesn't work. Is there anybody watching this that could testify, I tried making a list of do's and don'ts. I tried to conquer it in my willpower. Willpower doesn't work. I'm gonna need his power. We're frustrated because we're trying to get the right thing from the wrong level. But if we could ever learn how to fight from our spirit, if we could ever learn how to worship from our spirit, these are the kind that the Father is seeking, those who know how to worship in spirit and in truth. If we could ever cry out from our spirit, could it be? We're frustrated because we've been trying to achieve the right results from the wrong level. I know that you can protect your transportation by locking your car doors, but I wanna know, can you protect your spirit? Because in 2023, we have to have this attitude. It's not personal, it's spiritual. 
I know that you can protect your financial institution by having a pin or, or having a face ID, but I want to know, can you protect your spirit for 2023? This time, it's not just personal. No, it's spiritual. I know that you can protect your phone. Look how thick your phone case is. What I'm asking on tonight is, do you know how to protect your spirit? This time, it's not personal. It's spiritual. I know that you're no longer able to use this slave girl for your profit, but don't take it personal. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. To not be able to identify when something is spiritual, to not be able to know how to protect your spirit is to invite spiritual graffiti. Anybody can mark on you. Anybody can paint on you. Anybody can distract you. Anybody can bleed on you. And I think the conversation that we're having on tonight for many of us is prophetic because God is saying, hey, I want you to know as you're starting this year off, the father has the right to cut. And when I cut you, no, it's not because I'm trying to punish you or get you back for something you did in 2017 to 2018. No, I cut you so that I can keep you. I can keep you. Our spirit, many of us, that annoyance that you feel on the inside is our spirit saying, how long, how long will you continue to ignore my last instruction? Doesn't matter that it's a new year. If you haven't followed the old instruction that God gave you, the year will change, but you won't. How long will you allow that counterfeit to have access to you? How long will you let the enemy talk you out of what God is trying to talk you into? How long will you allow a lie to keep you comfortable? This time for 2023, it's not personal. It's spiritual. This means you're going to have to reach a place of unavailability. That part though, you're going to have to reach a place of unavailability. I'm unavailable to your toxicity. I'm unavailable to your drama. I'm, I'm not trying to be mean. It's not personal. It's spiritual. I'm unavailable to that. Getting this spiritual brilliance will cause for people to misjudge you. Understanding that, okay, I have to protect my spirit. It's gonna cause for people to misjudge you because when you decide to change who you are, certain people will struggle because of who you've been. When you decide to change who you are, people will have a struggle releasing who you have been. I was compatible with who you were before you were protecting your spirit. When you decide to change, I'm just simply suggesting be bold enough to be disliked. That's so good. How about have the courage to be disliked? Have the boldness to not be bound by what others think of you. See, this is how many of us are plagued by what I like to call over-responsibility. Over-responsibility. This is when we feel the emotions or the happiness of someone else is solely my responsibility over responsibility. The emotions, the happiness of somebody else is solely my responsibility. And this word that I'm attempting to articulate to you for just a few moments on tonight has been designed by heaven to give you a spiritual awareness this year. It's just setting the tone. This word on tonight has been designed by heaven to cause for you to expand. This word on the night has been designed to get you to leave casual Christianity. No more normal Christianity, safe Christianity. Many of us have settled for polluted wells when God is calling you to fresh springs. Just because everybody drinks there doesn't mean we should drink there too, then call it, then call it an acquired taste. I want to take you higher. I want to take you deeper. And certain things this year, I'm going to have to cut but I'm not cutting you to hurt you. I'm cutting you. Y'all talk to me, put it in the room to keep you. So this is what Jerry has recognized. The goal of the enemy is to make you heavy in spirit. 
heavy in spirit, spirit of heaviness. The word heaviness in the Greek is boros. It means to be pulled downward or have a overwhelmingly heavy weight. That is the spirit of heaviness. Heaviness is boros. It means to be pulled downward, overwhelmed weight. There's something that's overwhelming me on the inside. So watch this. The enemy tries to attack us in the spirit, which manifests in the mind and heart, which then exuberates from the body. Weight gain, weight loss, hair loss, wrinkles, whatever it may be. I'm trying to crush your spirit. I'm trying to crush your spirit. I'm trying to get you to be stuck by what happened. I want to break the breaker. I need to crush your spirit. And somebody's watching this and like, no, it's what my mama did. No, it's what they did. But remember Ephesians chapter six, verse two, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places, in the unseen realm where we can't see with the natural eye. That's what's behind this. The puppet may have been mama. The puppet may have been an ex. The puppet may have been an ex pastor or whatever it may be, but you're not wrestling with the person. It's not personal is spiritual. I'm trying to help you start this year off by forgiving somebody. It's not just them. It's the spirit using them. The enemy seeks to attack the spirit, which then manifests in the mind and heart. My mind begins to think thoughts. My heart fears feeling that again, and that manifests in my body. So the same way the father said, let us make man. Who is us? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Let us make man. Okay, so God God exists with a three in one. He's God the Father, He's God the Son, He's God the Holy Spirit. Similar like I am three in one. I am a father, I am a brother, and I am a son. Same person, but I have three different, three different roles that I live by. Three different roles that I play. In the same way, if God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness for us to be like God, we have a three in one too. Our three in one is our body, our soul, and our spirit. Our body, our soul, and our spirit. Our body has world awareness. When you're cold, you're wearing a hoodie like I'm wearing. When something's loud, you cover your ears. You have body awareness, okay? The soul, tons of videos I've done on this. The soul is the part of you that houses your mind, your will, emotions, and imaginations. That's the soul. But your spirit is the ethernet cord to God. It's how you download revelation from God. It's how you upload worship to God. Without God, you have a body, you have a soul, but you're spiritually dead. Okay? Many times throughout the scriptures, we see the word soul and spirit are not always interchangeable. I want to prove this to you by showing you Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So this passage of, this passage is saying, okay, the word of God is living and powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing. Remember, it's not personal, it's spiritual. The right of Hebrews is telling us there's certain things in scripture that's not going to sit well with your soul, <laughs> but it's going to edify your spirit. The word of God pierces even to the division of soul and spirit. There's certain things that your soul wants to continue to do that your spirit is saying, not in 2023. There's certain things that your soul is saying, I like this, but your spirit is saying, this is unhealthy. This is toxic. And so I have to recognize as I'm navigating this calendar year, there's certain things that my mind is used to, that my mind likes, that my emotions like, but my spirit is saying that's unhealthy. Your spirit is your ethernet cord.
like me studying for this particular therapy Thursday session. It's me downloading from the spirit so that I can upload it into my soul and manifest it out of my body. Does this make sense? So the same way God is three in one, we are also three in one, body, soul, and spirit. The enemy tries to attack us and hit our spirit. He can care less about your car. He can care less about your job. I wanna affect your spirit because that's where your faith is. I wanna affect your spirit because that's where your breakthrough worship is. I wanna give trauma in your spirit because that's where your wholeness is. That's where the real you is. We are humans, but we are also spirit beings. When we die, our spirit will go back to God. So our body is just a tent. That's all it is. And so the enemy is not just after your body. He wants to crush the spirit. spirit spiritual health doesn't just happen by accident. Spiritual health requires A, for you to be exposed to it, and B, for you to cultivate it. Spiritual health, it starts by you being A, exposed to what is spiritually healthy, and B, cultivating that. You cultivate it by having the hard, uncomfortable conversations. You cultivate it by having the willingness to unlearn what you have learned. You cultivate it by times like this, being intentional with your spiritual growth and your spiritual healing. This is how you cultivate it. And you also cultivate it by the power of recognition. When thieves target a house, they usually wear a mask. You know why? Because if you could recognize me, you could trace me. <laughs> that looked like Pookie. Man, that, that looked like if you could recognize me, you could, you could trace me. So I wear a mask so you can't trace who I am. Please hear me. Please hear me. If you could recognize it, you could trace it. Deliverance is not just stopping the act. It's discovering how it started. So we're trying to unmask some thieves on tonight. Thieves of your joy and thieves of your clarity and thieves of your spiritual growth. If you could recognize it, you could trace it. You could trace it. So there, there's, there's four points I wanna give us, and I'm done for tonight, on how we get to a place. How do we get to a place where we can recognize, okay, this is something that's unhealthy for my spirit. Because believe it or not, the skill of evil spirits is to blend. Mm. The skill of an evil spirit is to blend. Remember, go back to that snake. Snakes, one of their main weapons is camouflage. Spirits seek to blend. They place themselves in atmospheres where it looks like they belong there. So the enemy always hides in the lawn of your deliverance. One more time. The enemy always tries to hide in the front lawn of your deliverance. He tries to make you offended by those who will help you. He tries to get you turned off by those who will help you heal. He's in the front lawn of your deliverance. Remember, when Paul and Silas, after they prayed, they were met by a spirit. The enemy always traffics in the front lawn of your deliverance. Before the real thing comes the counterfeit comes the counterfeit. So four ways that we can enhance our spiritual aware awareness. Number one, fasting. All this information that you see right here is what we're doing together as a church. And I, and I highly encourage you to join us for our corporate fast. It starts Sunday at midnight and each and every day, they're gonna be post on my social media, Redefine TV social media on how to guide you how to fast and just being able to give you the spiritual strength to lay a spiritual deposit for this year. Fasting. This is important because fasting strengthens your no and fasting exposes where the spirit thinks he has a grip. Wherever your flesh rages when you fast is where the enemy is trying to hold you. To enhance my spiritual awareness, I must fast get my spirit in control. Number two, to enhance my spiritual awareness, I must take heed to internal annoyance. Notice your spiritual mood when you're in certain places. Don't just dismiss that. Your internal annoyance. 
Like I stated earlier, sometimes that's the Spirit's way of saying, how long are you gonna let them have access to us? This is not healthy. It's affecting your mood. It's affecting your witness. It's affecting your peace. This is not healthy. Take heed to that internal static. That's God's way of saying, this is something I wanna cut. This is something I wanna cut. This womb, you've outgrown for 2023. And I'm manifesting that confirmation to you by an internal annoyance, similar to what Paul had. Number three, devotion. I can't know God's voice if I don't read God's word. Plain and simple, I don't even need to spend much time on that. Number four, a word consumption. This is important because if Jesus is our living bread, we have to consume the bread to live. This is how I evaluate, this is how I enhance my spiritual awareness. And last one, awareness of purpose. Awareness of purpose. I was able to say no to a lot today because I knew my purpose on the day. I have to be here for you. I have to serve you. So I'm aware what's a distraction. I'm aware what's taking me out of what I'm supposed to do because I know my assignment. A lot of us, the reason we're all over the place is because we don't have the anchor of purpose and the anchor of assignment. When I know my assignment, I'm able to recognize when this is something trying to distract me. It's when I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I live life aimless. And when you live life aimless, everything looks like a target. So I want to just challenge us on today, challenge us on tonight to recognize if we truly want 2023 to be our winning season, we're going to have to remember the Father has the authority to cut and whatever he needs to cut so that we could grow. Remember, he's not cutting us to hurt us. He's cutting us to keep us. It's not personal, it's spiritual. Father, help us to remember you get joy when we give you glory. You get joy, we get joy when we recognize that you are orchestrating our steps and we're not dealing with the repercussions of trying to make something right that was never your will. Help us to be reminded that you don't just order our steps, you order our stops. And we want this year to be a year of massive growth. Cut whatever you need to cut so we can go wherever you want us to go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.